Hello and welcome to this course on Power BI Beginner Class. For those who don't have any knowledge on BI or Power BI, you are absolutely on the right track because we are going to do step by step starting from scratch. We are going to build a Power BI report using data extracted from Excel file. Our source file looks like this nice and simple and from time to time we will add in new data points because we are going to learn starting from the basic once we have loaded this source into power bi we will create some simple visuals to begin with and the goal for us as a business analyst or bi developer is to create insights for our clients and to understand their customer processing behavior so that our clients are able to leverage the insight generated from the visuals and to make a wise decisions or a quick move before the business starts to get more and more decline. Okay? First of all, we are going to learn how to load in our data source into Power BI. Then we will look into how to create visuals. Next, we are going to look into Power Query to do some of the transformation required to get through some of the requirements in the report. And we are going to look into Power BI data model to set up the data linkage between tables. Okay, and at the end of the course we will come out with a dashboard that looks like this all right so don't get intimidated by these fancy visuals here because we are going to build this together and we are going to have a high level understanding on how power bi works and we will go into details by details on each of the module all right so don't get too worried because we're gonna guide you step by step in each of the modules and yeah i hope you enjoy this course with me and let's begin our journey all right guys today we are going through the content of the course first of all let's kick start the course by introducing the fundamental of bi next we will get to know how to download power bi and we will have a brief introduction to BI. We will continue with the rest in this list moving on to the following module. We will be learning how to load data into Power BI and transform the data loaded using Power Query. Then we will begin to build our first dashboard and get to know some of the common visuals that are used in Power BI. After creating our first dashboard, we will get to learn how to create new measures. Next, we will learn how to perform sorting in Power BI. Slice and dice is an important feature in BI environment and this will be covered right after we learn how to perform sorting in Power BI. Not to forget that a calendar table is very important as well to give us the flexibility on using time intelligent DAX expressions on our Power BI report. We will also be exposed on how to create buttons for navigation. And lastly, we will get to know the usage of bookmarks in Power BI. Okay, hope you find this content interesting and i'll see you in the next module thanks and bye bye all right guys welcome back to this learning module so the complete terminology of bi is actually business intelligence okay what is business intelligence all about first of all we are dealing with business any kind of business, either it is a profitable or non-profitable 
organizations. Next, how do we relate intelligence with business? First of all, we are going to collect all kinds of data that is available in the business and we analyze the data provided to showcase some of the possible actions or decision making to improve the performance or revenue of the business. And yep, this is the general idea of what business intelligence is all about. So our job is to extract our client's data either from database or other structured file format tables. Okay? In this course, we will be using Microsoft Excel as our data files. Okay? Once we have extracted all the related data files, we need to transform this table into a generalized table format so that we can analyze the data with Power BI visual objects. Okay? Some client might have their requirements on the dashboard, but if your client is new towards BI, you might need to recommend some of the visual objects that can showcase insects or visual objects that can help your client in making decisions to improve their revenue. Okay? And yep, that's all on the introduction on BI. Thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next module. Thanks and bye-bye. Hello and welcome back to this learning module. So today we're going to talk about how do we uh, install our Power BI desktop. Alright. So to get started with Power BI, click on the link in this slide here which will be attached in the downloadable section okay so once you have entered this page here click on products then we select power bi desktop and once we are in click on the yellow download free button here and a window will pop out select open with microsoft store okay once microsoft store is open click on the download button okay so for me is showing launch because i have installed power bi desktop in my pc okay then your download should begin shortly all right and that's all on the installation of power bi and i'll see you in the next module thanks and bye bye Alright guys, welcome back to this learning module on how to load data with Power BI. Okay, so in the top panel, let's go to Home tab. Let's select on Gate Data. Alright, let's click on this Gate Data drop down here and we're going to select on Excel here. Alright, because our data source is in Excel file. Alright. Let's click on the Excel file here and let's go to the file path where you have stored the data source. Alright. Now let's click on open. So now we can see there is two sheets here. Let's load in sheet 2 here. Alright. Click on sheet 2 and we're going to click on the load button. Alright. Now we can see at this preview window here, our headers has been labeled as the table columns. Okay, so this is very good. This is what we want, and this looks perfect, right? So let's load our data. Click on the load button here. All right. Once we hit on the load button, we are back to our Power BI desktop layout. All right. Now let's hit on the refresh again to load in our data because just now it's just loading a connection now we are going to load in the data into power bi all right so we can check the data that we have loaded in by clicking on this data at the left panel here okay let's go to sheet 2 here and yep this is all the table that has been loaded into 
Power BI. Right here, we can see there's duplicates here. Let's go to the table and right mouse click on it and we delete the whole table here. Alright. Let's just remove the whole table here and we can see our table has been loaded in accordingly. Now for this calendar table here, don't worry about this. We are going to guide you step by step on how to create calendar table. And we are going to learn about what is the usage of a calendar table. Alright. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next module. Thanks and bye bye. Alright guys, welcome back to this learning module on how to create our first dashboard. Today we are going to cover three kinds of visuals in Power BI dashboard. Okay, we are going to talk about how to create slices, how to create cards, and also how to create a donut chart. Alright, let's begin by creating a slicer. Alright. Let's go to this visualization tab here and let's go to slicer. Let's click on it and we can see there's a visual that has been created at our report here. All right. Let's go to the fields at the very right toolbox navigator. Let's go to sheet and we are going to check on the product and we can see that our slicer has been added into our page here. All right. So let's resize our slicer a little smaller. Now the next visual we are going to create is a card visual. Okay. So now in the visualization toolbox here, go to the card object and click on it. Okay. Sorry. Let's undo this by selecting Ctrl and Z button. We are going to click on the page first. Okay. Because right now we are actually selecting on the slicer option here. Okay. And if we click on the card visual, this slicer will be replaced with the card visual. Okay. So let's click on the page here so that we are now referencing on the page. Okay. Now let's select on the card. Let's click on it and a card visual has been added into our page. All right. Now we are going to drag in our sum of total value into our card visual. Let's check on the value box and we can see our card is filled with the selected measure. Let's add in some formattings to this KPI box here. Let's go to the format tab, click on the format card here and let's go to format. Okay. Next, let's place a title for our KPI box. Let's turn on the title and there's a drop down here. Let's click on it. Now we can add in the title text right here. Let's add in total sales. All right. Next, let's move our text title to the center. Okay. Let's align it to the center. All right. Let's collapse the title drop down and let's go to our background. Now we can also change the background color here. Let's select blue color. All right. So our background color has been changed. We can add in the border color as well. Okay. Let's switch our border on and let's go to the drop down here for the color. Let's select dark blue color. All right. Now let's click on the page here and we can see our border has been added into the KPI box. Okay. Now for this KPI box here, our title needs to be a little larger because this is the grand total for our sales. All right. So let's have this KPI box a little bit more bigger. Let's click on this KPI box here and let's go to formatting. Let's go to our title and we are going to increase our title with a little more extra font size. Okay. So this looks good here. We don't need the measure label here, okay, because we already have a title. So we can turn off our category label here. All right, let's turn it off and yep, this looks good. All right, now for our donut chart, we can add in our products here. 
and then we can go by our sum of value okay so this will be reading sum of our sales by product okay let's place in right beside the total sales card box let's make this a little bit bigger let's move this over okay for the kpi box we also can make it bigger but we don't need to make it too big so that we can get a view that is comfortable for our eyes right let's just give this a little bit more space on top okay let's give this a little bit margin here all right and yep this looks great let's give the donut chart a little bit of margin all right so now we can see if we didn't select on our products this will actually give us the sum of our total sales by all of our products and yep that's all for the lesson for today thanks for watching this video and i can't wait to see you in the next module thanks and bye bye all right guys welcome back to this learning module today we're gonna learn how do we create a table object and a bar visual okay let's go to the visualization panel and we click on this table object all right now we can see a table has been added into our page here now let's expand this a little larger okay let's make this a little larger here okay just like this let's go to sheet 2 here let's hit on the drop down here okay now let's check on the product here to add the product as a dimension into our table visual let's check on this next let's check on our value checkbox here all right let's check on this and yep we have the table created on our page all right we can also add the date column into the table let's check on this and we are going to move the date to the very top as the first dimension all right so yep this is our table all right next we can format our table and we are going to add in a title for our table all right let's enable the title and let's expand the options and we are going to enter our title text here all right let's add in table details here all right and yeah our title is up all right now if we don't want to have the total at the bottom of the table we don't want the value within the table to be aggregated together what we can do is we can go to the fields here and we click on this drop down here all right let's select don't summarize all right this will actually return a table without the total at the bottom of the table all right so this is our table next we are going to create our bar chart all right let's create a cluster column chart all right let's click on it i'm going to add in our dates into our visual and we are going to add in the sum of value as the measure to our visual all right so this will give us the total sales by date all right so let's explain this a little bit now we can see our bar visual with all the month and year within the visual all right let's name our visual with a proper title all right let's call this as our sales trend all right and yeah we have created our first dashboard all right and yeah that's all for the lesson today thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next module. Thanks and bye bye. Alright guys, before moving on to the next topic, let's test ourselves with what we have learned until now. Alright? So in this discount sheet here, we have a new column called as discount here. Alright? 
try to load this new column which is the discount column and try to display the new column into table visuals like this okay so this is a very straightforward challenge and I'm sure you can do it so try it out before moving on to the solution all right all right guys let's begin our challenge all right let's start off by clicking on the transform data here all right so go to the home tab here and go to transform data all right let's move to the source and we are going to locate our discount sheet here all right so let's go to navigations and this source here let's change it to discount all right now let's enter and now we have our discount column here all right next let's check on the third step here all right okay this looks good here because our headers has been actually promoted from the first row to the column names all right so this is good here let's close and apply let's try to check if our discount columns has been added into the sheet table here all right let's click on this expand here and we can see that our discount column has actually added into our table so what we do next is we're going to click on this table here and we can see there's a checkbox here check and this indicates that which of the columns has been actually added into the table all right now let's check on discount column here and yep yeah, our discount column has been added into the table all right so yeah that's all about the challenge today and challenge complete hello and welcome back to this learning module today we're going to introduce you how to create measures in power bi so what are measures measures are used when we are computing an aggregated value either it is a sum it is an average or a divide and so on in the next demo we're gonna show you the difference between sum and sum x functions so as we can see in this table both measures are returning different values if we look carefully on the values in each of the rows they are actually returning the same values just that when it is aggregating to calculate the grand total for the table the sum x function seems to return a value that is more logical if we compare with the sum function this is interesting right just a little difference in the function and the result are way different so let's find out the answer in the next demo all right guys welcome back to this learning module in this demo we are going to demonstrate the difference between the sum and sum x function let's investigate the difference in Excel basically using a sum function we will sum up all the values in the column then multiply with the sum of the total discount all right let's replicate this logic and we are going to add up all this value here which will give us 34 11 all right next let's multiply with our sum of the discount column all right now let's add in one minus here because we are interested in the percentage after deducting the discount given to our customer all right let's do this and the result return in a negative value all right 
Let's replicate the same logic using the sumx function. For the sumx function, this will iterate for every single line so that the measure will capture the value that has been multiplied with the balance of the discount in percentage for each of the line. Alright, let's try it out. We are going to get the value and multiply with 1 minus the discount column. Alright, let's hit on enter and we are going to drag this downwards. Alright, lastly, the sumx logic will sum up all these values here after the iteration has completed to compute the grand total in the column. So using the sumx function is what we want if we want to iterate the sum logic for every single line so that our grand total is returning the correct value. And yep, that's all for the logic explanation and we are going to replicate this logic in Power BI desktop measures. Thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next module. Thanks and bye bye. Alright guys, welcome back to this learning module. Now let's continue to create our uh, sum and sum x measures. Alright? Before we begin the demo, let's click on our sheet 2 table here and let's create a new measure. Let's try to sum our discount column. Alright? Let's call this total discount here, okay? And we're gonna say sum of our discount column. Let's try a simple one and see if it's work, all right? Now let's drag this total discount into our table. Let's click on the table and we click on our total discount column, all right? Something is not right. Let's check on the error, all right? Let's click on see details. And it says the sum, the function sum cannot work with values of type string. Alright, let's try to remove our total discount column. And we notice that the value of the discount column is actually placed on the left. Alright, this is something weird. Take a look at the value for this column value here. It's actually placed on the right. So, for the column which has value placed on the right is actually referred as a numbers column all right so our discount column is written as a text data type so we need to update our data type for our discount column here all right so let's click on transform data and we go to our discount column here let's right click on the header and we click on change type here Let's change it to a decimal number. Alright. So we can see here this is actually in decimal. Alright. And for our value column, this is actually in number formatting. For our product, is a text column. Alright. And our date is in date format. Alright. Let's click on close and apply. And we notice that our discount column has been placed to the right in the table all right now let's try to drag our total discount column into the table and yep it works all right so yep so today we have actually learned that for columns that is placed on the left is actually a text column and the column that is placed on the right is actually a numbers format column all right so please take note of all these little little details here because if we did not take note of this when we are creating our measures we will run into a similar issue like this all right so that's all for today and in the next module we are going straight into creating the sum and sum x measures all right thanks and bye bye all right guys welcome back to this learning module so let's start off by removing our total disc column all right so we are not going to require this total discount here just make sure that we have already clicked on the table here and we 
uncheck this total discount here all right let's create a new measure let's start off by creating our sum value measure all right i'm going to put an equal sign here and we're going to call our sum function out and we put in value and then we close over brackets and we add in a multiply we're going to multiply with our sum of discount all right let's close our parenthesis here and remember that we actually want to get the percentage after uh, deducting our discount all right so we're going to add in our one minus in front of the sum of discount here now let's hit on enter and we place our sum of value inside our table here all right let's just tick on let's just check on this and we get our sum of value here all right now we're gonna add in our we're gonna create a new measure and we call this as the sumx value all right so now we are going to use this sumx function here all right just type in the word sum then the sumx function will be shown all right now we just type in the word uh, sumx here and then we can see this dex here is actually referring to a table all right so the first parameter is a table we're gonna put in our table let's put in sheet 2 all right and then the expression that we want to evaluate is our sheet 2 value right sheet 2 value and multiply by our discount all right Let's search for the discount uh, column here, all right? And then make sure we close our parentheses as well. And remember to add in our min one minus in front of our discount column. Let's hit or enter. And now we're gonna bring in our sum max value into our table, all right? Let's make this bar chart a little bit are smaller so that we can have a complete view of our measures inside our table all right everything is looks similar except for the total here right so this is the difference between using the sumx and the sum function here if you want to iterate this sum for each of the line please remember to use a sum x here because x refers to iteration all right and that's all for today thanks and bye bye hello and welcome to this learning module today we're gonna learn about how to perform sorting in power bi sorting in power bi is very straightforward just click on the three dots on the top right corner of the table and we click on the sorting order that we want easy right however what if we want to have a custom sort for our table let's assume we want to sort our products column in a specific order we want to have B as the product to be shown in the table followed by A followed by D and lastly C alright this would be a little tricky but if you follow along with this module you will get it right okay step one we need to create a table to store our sort order alright so this is our new table here and then we just put in our B as the first priority in the sort order followed by A and then D and lastly C alright and then we will name this table as the product sort here okay 
Step 2. We go to the data model viewer and we create link from this product sort table to our sheet to table. We will drag the product column in the product sort table to the product column in sheet to table. Once we are done, let's change the filter direction by clicking on this uh, arrow button here. Just double click on this arrow button and we will see this edit relationship window open up. Alright. We will change the cross filter direction to both. Alright. Step 3. Let's go back to our report under fields toolbox here. Let's go to sheet 2 and we create right mouse click and we create a new column uh, and we name it as product sort. Alright. Next we're going to insert the related function into the column. This is to create the column with all the sorts values from the product sort table. Alright. Step 4. Let's go to sheet 2 and we click on the product column. Alright. Go to the column tools panel at the top here. Click on sort by column and then we select the product sort that we have created using the related function. Alright. And the final step is we go to the the sales details table and we click on the three dots on the top right corner and we select sort by product all right and yep we get our table sorted in the specific order all right that's all for now let's hop into the demo all right guys welcome back to this learning module today we're gonna demonstrate on how to perform sorting based on the sorting priority or based on a custom sort with a specific sorting order. Alright, so let's click on the table and let's go to the three dots button at the top right corner. Let's click on it and now we can see there is options to sort in ascending order or to sort in descending order. This sorting is based on which column that we want to sort. Alright. For now, we can see the product column is glowing, right? This is because our table is sorted according to the product column. Let's click on product to remove the sorting. Let's click on these three dots again and the table is not sorted with any of the columns here. Alright? Let's click on product again. Go back to the three dots button and let's go to the sort by and we can see our product is in bold, alright? Which means the table is currently sorted by the product column, alright? Let's go to sort by ascending here. Now we can see the order has been changed to ascending order, alright? Let's go ahead and click on sort by descending. Now we can see our order has been changed from the ascending order to the descending alphabetical order all right now we can see our order has been changed from the ascending order to the descending alphabetical order all right this is how we can sort our table in a very straightforward manner if you want to have a specific sort order step one we need to create a custom sort table all right Let's go to our format here and let's click on enter data. Now let's rename our table name as product sort. Next we're going to name the first column as product and the second column as sorting. Alright. For A we want to sort it as the second in order and for B this will be the first priority to be sorted in the table and let's enter into a new line by hitting the down arrow keyboard button 
and we will have a new line right after the line before all right so for product c it will be the last to be sorted okay let's put in four because we only have four products in this sample data all right and product d will be three okay let's click on the load button here all right now we can see our product sort table has been loaded into power bi report okay next let's go to data model viewer go to the left panel here and the last one will be the model okay let's click on it and now if you don't have this linkage here, let me show you step by step on how to get this linkage here. Alright, let's remove this linkage here. Okay, I will click on delete and if you want to have a proper linkage, just drag our product and drop it on top of our sheet to product column here. Alright, drop it right on top and our linkage has been built. Okay. Now to change our filtering direction, let's click on this arrow button here. Let's double click on it. And we can see the edit relationship table has been shown. All right. So for this cross filter direction, let's change it to both direction. All right. Let's click on OK. Now we can see the arrow has been changed to multi direction filtering method. All right. Let's go back to our report. We are going to add in our product sort column into our sheet to table here. All right. So let's right mouse click on the sheet to table and we are going to create a new column here. All right. Let's create a new column and we are going to name this column as product. Oh, sorry. This should be product sort. All right. Let's add in the function related. Okay. And this will be our product sorting, right? Let's enter and close this parenthesis here. Hit on enter. And we have created our product sort column in our sheet to table here. All right. Next, we click on this product here. And we go to our columns tool. Click on sort by column here and we are going to sort by our product sort column. All right. Let's click on this three dots button and let's sort by ascending. All right. Now we can see the first in the sorting priority is B, then followed by A, followed by D and lastly product C. All right. If we want to have a reverse order, we can just click on our sort by descending here. All right. The order of the sorting will be reversed. And if you go by product C, D, and then followed by A, and lastly, product B. All right. And yep, that's all about sorting in Power BI. Thanks for watching this video. And I can't wait to see you in the next module. Thanks and bye bye. Hello and welcome back to this learning module. Today, we're going to know why do we need a calendar table in our Power BI report. A calendar table enables us to extend our report into periodical categorizations such as the year, quarter, and month. So a calendar table is very important when we have measures that requires to compute the two date formulas such as the month to date, quarter to date, and year to date. To create a calendar table, let's go to the table tools at the top panel and we select new table. Next, we name the table as calendar and we insert the calendar auto function. This function here will help us to create the calendar table automatically which will provide us the flexibility to extend our report into year and month hierarchy okay do note that in order to apply time intelligence dax functions 
we need to have a calendar table. The DAX functions, which is the data analysis expressions, is a very powerful library to build our measure that best fit our requirements. We will go into DAX right after this demo about creating a new calendar table. That's all for today. Thanks and bye bye. Alright guys, welcome back to this demo. Today we're going to show you how to leverage DAX to create measures that best fit our requirements. Alright, let's try to create two measures here. One will be the month to date measure and the other will be the year to date measure. Alright, so before we begin the demo today, let's go to our data model to check if our linkage has been properly connected. Alright, so in order to use DAX time intelligence functions, we need to have a calendar table and the calendar table has to be connected with our fact table. Alright. So this is well connected. If your tables are not connected, please drag the calendar date column on top of the sheet to date column. Alright? Drag it on top and it will be linked together. Alright? Now let's double click on this arrow here and we change this cross filter direction from single to both. Alright? Let's click on OK and we will go back to our Power BI report. Alright? Now let's try to create a slicer. Alright. Click on the slicer at the visualization panel. And let's go to our calendar table and click on the date drop down again. Let's go to our month and we select on our month column here. Okay. So we will have our month slicer here. Now let's resize this a little so that we can have our month slicer in our screen. Alright. Let's resize the donut chart a little smaller. Let's have this KPI cut a little smaller. And let's drag the month slicer on top right beside our product slicer. Alright, this looks good. We are cool here. Now let's go to our sales details table and we go to the sum value measure. Let's deselect this measure because in this tutorial, we are not going to use the sum and sum x value and also our discount column. Let's deselect our discount column. Alright. Next, we are going to right mouse click on our sheet table here and let's select on new measure. Alright. Now, first of all, we are going to create our sales month to date measure. Alright. So, we are going to insert the total month to date function and this is a DAX expression. Let's take a look at the expression here. We are required to insert an expression here. Let's go to sum value. Okay. Next, we are required to fill in a date column. Alright. Let's add in our calendar date here and let's close our parentheses here. Let's hit on enter and our measure has been created. Now we are going to add this measure into our table. Let's check on this sales month to date box and we will have our sales month to date measure in our table. Alright. Now let's try to select on October and let's see the result of the measure. Alright. Now it's returning the current month of October sales. Right. Let's create one more measure to showcase the difference between month to date and year to date logic. Alright. Let's click on new measure. Now we are going to add in the sales year to date. We are going to add in the DAX total year to date function. Let's add in sum of value and let's close the parentheses, insert the comma and we fill in the calendar date column. All right. Let's close our parentheses again. Let's hit on enter and now let's hit on our sales detail table. Let's click on the sales year to date checkbox and yep basically a month to date will show us the current month sales and our year to date will be an accumulation starting from january until october all right let's click on september and the results will be accumulated until september for our year to date sales 
All right. For month to date, the table will show us the month to date sales on September. All right. So DAX is a very powerful expression builder. With this simple DAX function, we have created two different set of periodic logical expressions. All right. This is very cool, right? And yep, that's all for the lesson today. Thanks for watching this video and I can't wait to see you in the next module. Thanks and bye bye. Hello and welcome back to this learning module. Now let's talk about the chart interactions in Power BI. And by default, all slicers is set to be able to filter across all visuals within a page. So for example, let's select on B and all our charts will be filtered to the results only for product B. Alright? However, what if we want a specific visual to not react regardless of which slicer value that is selected? For example, for this card visual we do not want the month slicer or this product slicer here to affect the value in the card because we want this to be the grand total of sales throughout the whole year, right? So we need to set our slicer to not react with this card visual, alright? Now let's, let's click on the slicer and let's go to formats, alright? Now we can see there is an edit interactions under formatting here all right let's click on it and now we can see there's a cancel like icon appears at each of the charts right so let's click on the icon for the card visual let's click on this all right and now we can see that even if we have selected the slicer for product c our card visual is not affected all right let's try again for our month slicer here let's click on october this card is still reflecting the value for october all right let's click on this uh this none icon here and we can see now our card is not affected by any of the slicer here all right so this is a very cool feature we don't want the visuals to actually have any reaction when we click on the slices all right so yep this is an example that we quite often use when we create a kpi card but we don't want our slicer to actually affect our results in the kpi card all right and yeah that's all for today thanks and bye bye Hello and welcome back to this learning module. Today we are going to learn how do we create a button in this landing page here. So we are going to create a button that will help us to navigate from this landing page to our main page. Okay? So let's begin. So on this insert tab here we can see on the elements there is a buttons here all right let's click on these buttons and we select on right arrow okay let's check on this let's select this and now let's expand this a little bit bigger okay now let's enable this button text here okay so let's uh, click on this uh, button text arrow button here and we can insert our button text here all right let's insert main page here all right so if we want our button text to actually align to the left we can click on this horizontal alignment we can change this horizontal alignment to left all right now our buttons is overlapping with our button text so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the icon here okay let's click on right yep this looks good 
maybe for our main our button text here let's give it an extra font here oops this looks too big let's give it 20 or maybe 22 yeah 22 looks nice right so now what we're going to do is we're going to add in our action to our button all right let's click on action here all right now let's click on this drop down here and we're going to select page navigation all right and for this destination we're going to select main page all right let's make this a bit smaller yep this looks great here and now let's click on control and click and let's see we can go to our main page and yep this after clicking on the button it leads us to the main page here so after we have published this report here we doesn't need to actually use this control and click we can straight away click on this uh, button here to bring us to the next page so the reason why we need to use control and click here because when we click on this this actually opens up the properties within the buttons all right so if we want to navigate to the next page and we want the action to actually works we need to click on control and click on the button all right and um, yeah that's all for today so thanks and bye bye
Alright guys, welcome to this learning module. Today, we're going to learn how to create bookmarks. Bookmarks are very useful when we want to save all current selections that we have selected so that we can return to this current view with all the selections selected. Subsequently, we can use bookmarks to clear all selections to return to the original view of the page. Let's go to the show pane panels at the top and then we click on bookmarks. Okay, step two. We can see the bookmarks toolbox has been added into our right toolbar. Okay, step three. We're gonna remove all the selections in the dashboard. So let's remove the selection for month. Let's remove the selection for products. Alright. Now in the bookmarks toolbar here, let's select on add. Alright. Now let's name our newly created bookmarks as clear all. Okay. Now for the last step, let's create a button. Alright. So let's go to insert here and then we select on buttons let's select bookmarks all right so now we can see our buttons has been added into our page let's move it downwards to here all right let's give this a bigger size let's go to format button and then our button text here let's turn this on and we're gonna put in clear all Alright, let's close this button text here and let's go to action and this is already has been chosen to bookmarks. Alright, so this is good here and for our bookmark, we're going to select clear all here. Alright, now let's try to select some of the slices here. Okay. Let's select uh, D here. Alright. Now assume that we have a lot of selections on our page. Let's say we have more than five selections. And it's going to be a very tedious job to actually deselect all of the selections. Alright. With a clear all button here, we can actually click on this button here and everything goes back to our original page. Alright. So this clear all bookmarks is actually a very important button for user to easily go back to the normal view of the page all right yeah that's all for today thanks and bye bye all right guys we have reached the end of our course here all right so congratulations you have did a very wonderful job there for being patient and reach the end of the course with me together all right so before we go apart, I would like to thank you for enrolling into this course and I really appreciate for you to be together with me in this course. So hope you can apply some of the techniques that I have showed you throughout the course and also how to create bookmarks and buttons. Okay, I hope you learn something from this course and with your outstanding creativity, I am sure you can build a more fascinating Power BI report than me. Lastly, please excuse my pronunciation. I know it's a bit off and I will do better from time to time. Alright, and yeah, that's all. So thanks again for enrolling into this course and I hope to see you in other courses very soon. Okay? So yeah, thanks and all the best to all of you.